Hello everyone, this is another episode of the Funcast. I'm very happy to have a green guest today. No, he is not green, <laughs> but the camera doesn't work very well. Um, I don't know if, it, uh, if it's because you are in Manila. Welcome, Mike McTurnan. <laughs> Hi. Hey, nice to talk to you, man. And I think it's just a poor quality camera I've got, actually, not just Manila air quality. So, anyway. Okay, it's not the air pollution. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. Mike, thank you very much for being part in uh, um, our uh, Fundcast project and uh, focusing on the question, what's hot, what's new in digital fundraising. But first of all, could you please introduce yourself? Uh, you are in Manila, the Philippines, but uh, what are you doing there? <laughs> yeah, so I, my name is Michael McTurnan. I'm a uh, fundraising marketing director with Save the Children Philippines. I'm here to start up the fundraising program for Save the Children in the Philippines, okay. where we're targeting individual local Filipinos to give money to our cause. I've been here for around two years okay. and have two years to go as okay. well <laughs> uh, and making great inroads in some ways, but also facing huge challenges. In so other ways. originally, Thanks. where are you from? Sorry. Yeah, yeah. I'm from New Zealand originally okay. um, and through a long series of uh, other positions, I ended up here It was Save in the Philippines, yeah. Okay, sounds uh, very interesting. So how do you uh, start up fundraising for Save the Children in, in the Philippines? Well, one of the... Um, well, there's a long, long process, yes, obviously. Yes, sure. <laughs> <laughs> and moving from essentially an organization that never did fundraising locally at all mm -hmm. to an organization that does do fundraising uh, was a big, big shift. Um so we're, the, we're focused on the basics, okay. obviously. We, we have a website. Mm -hmm. um, we have Facebook page, Twitter, social media. Um, okay. We have our fingers out there, out and about. Uh, we, we looked at some things like telemarketing, okay. lead generation, conversion campaigns, mm -hmm. uh, and face-to-face -face fundraising, obviously the big, the big channel that many organizations rely on these days. Mm -hmm. um, and that's really been the driver for us so okay. far, has been our face-to-face. -face. But in 2016, it's actually um, quite topical for us to be having this conversation because we're taking a bit of a pivot to digital as well and really trying to invest some some resources into that channel to see what we can make work so it's really exciting to be talking to you about it okay. although we haven't done too much fabulous stuff that i can show off about at this stage <laughs> and do you also use uh, the traditional tools as uh, direct mail for example we do uh we've just sent out i think 20,000 direct mail pieces okay. this year okay. um it's our first test for direct mail in the market. The market here is um, considered by most to have an unreliable mail system, mm -hmm. um, but it has, has been quite an interesting test that we've been doing um, here where we're generating, I think we should get pretty close to a break even, Roy, okay. um, right. or maybe not far off, at least I think over the threshold of what we would be, be looking at. Mm -hmm. And then for us, it's a, it's a question of scale because there's only so many, um, for us, there's only so many valid addresses that we have. Okay. that we can communicate to it directly as well. All right, and, and back to, to the overview or the general view. Is it new for Save the Children to raise funds in the project countries or in, on the, in, the, in the field, let's say? Yeah, it is quite new. Um, we're, the Philippines office is considered a prospect member, okay. um, which is, in, is Save the Children's internal um, lingo for basically a country um, program office becoming um, a member office or a self-funding okay. office. We've All had right. examples of... Um, transitions in places like India and, and Hong Kong mm -hmm. uh, in the past, but this is really the first time as a global organization we've put a, a focus on it okay. and really said, hey, let's do this. And we're doing it here in the Philippines and in, in Indonesia and also in Colombia as well. So those are the three markets where Save the Children has um, agreed to invest resources in individual and corporate donations, private sector fundraising essentially in program offices. Yeah. Okay. And uh, as well in general, how is the market, uh, the, the, the philanthropy market in, um, in, uh, on, on the Philippines? So is, is uh, giving part of the tradition? Yeah, that, there's a culture of giving. Okay. It's the method uh, in the cause that may be uh, challenging in different, for different organizations. For us, mm -hmm. the cause is easy. Filipinos love children. Okay. Um, the mechanism can be challenging. We're, we're looking for that kind of... Um, You know the regular giving model, mm -hmm. or the high the high single gifts rather than the real small gifts. Which here there's more of a a tradition of you know giving a little bit of here and there on mm -hmm. a daily basis. Okay. So kind of, we're looking to kind of add that all up into into bigger monthly gifts and and annualized gifts. Um, so it's the market that Filipinos give and mm -hmm. Filipinos care. It's mm -hmm. just f for us 
fitting our overarching strategy and our needs and mapping those onto the needs of the donor and finding who are those, who's our target that we know fits into this group. Mm -hmm. Um, in some ways it's fortunate that, um, the, the credit card industry for us is essentially our market because to be, to get a credit card, you have to have disposable income here in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. Um, the banking in infrastructure is not really suit for purpose for regular giving mm -hmm. uh, unless you have a credit card. Oh. So that kind of, we, it ticks all the boxes for us without us having to make the decision. Yep. And basically it says that we've got 10 million credit card holders in the country okay. that are, are within our target demographic oh. uh, of a country of 110 million people. So, you know, around 10% of the, of, of the people, you know, in the country are within our target market. But it's nice, it refines it quite easily, mm -hmm. um, and for, then we can really focus on who we're trying to target and, and unlocking those guys into donations. The sad thing is that there are a lot of smaller donors that potentially mm -hmm. get left along the way. Um, so as we grow, that will be the next question, you know, in probably four or five years, how do we get to that middle class or those people that don't have that mechanism to give? Yep. Um, and, you know, how do we make sure we don't alienate those guys, uh, make them feel like we're a, you know, elitist organization or something like that? Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's where we're kind of where we're at right now. Wow. Okay. Sounds very interesting. And uh, let's focus a little bit on on digital fundraising. Um, so, how do you already use digital fundraising? You said you you set up a website. You have a Facebook page, and uh, what else? And what really works for Save the Children Philippines? Yeah. So we're. Um I don't know if we have anything that really works too spectacularly. <laughs> we, <laughs> must, yeah, be, we have... must be. Must <laughs> be. <laughs> yeah, it's it's moving, it's growing. So we're um, we're you know we're moving from just one or two donors a month to you know twelve or fifteen, and we're mm -hmm. moving up to twenty five to fifty, and so on and so forth. That's our plan. Mm -hmm. uh, what's working now is we have uh, we have a crowdfunding platform okay. um, that we have set up giving giving products on there where people can give, mm -hmm. and we drive people there through our email lists and the tr traditional kind of conversion campaign, sending out emails with donation asks, okay. blah, 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 blah. Yep. Um, and they click through and then they'll give to those, to those pages. And we're also seeing a lot of, quite a lot of organic, you know, um, crowdfunding initiatives from those people. Mm -hmm. Not a lot, but a few, you know, people, we had a photographer a while ago who, who traveled in the South, took a lot of photos and then he set up a page. We didn't even know who he was. He just set up this page and he raised five or 600 euro for us. Mm -hmm. Um, we had another, a really sad story where, a young boy who was about five years old died from dengue fever mm. and some friends of the family in Europe um, did some runs for Save the Children and the money came to us and they raised, I think it was 12 or 1,500 um, euros for our, for our work here. So we have these really interesting cases, mm -hmm. um, but for us it's about trying to invest in it and let people know about who we are um, because people, that's the sad reality as well. Our our target market for fundraising doesn't know who we are, but all of our beneficiaries love us, right? Because we do mm -hmm. awesome work. So, how do we how do we m tell these guys about how much these guys love us, and then together they'll they'll get on board and, and support our work? So, I think the crowdfunding mechanism has been the one of the best. Okay. Um, we've done some tests around Facebook conversions, social media mm -hmm. conversions, uh, but that's definitely a test, uh, and it's a case by case. So we spent. Um, during uh, the Nepal earthquake, we spent around 500 US dollars on Facebook ads, and we raised 5,000 dollars. Um, so we not bad. Really, <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you could scale that, obviously it would be, yeah. uh, would be amazing. Um, but so for us, it's like having the capacity, having the resources, mm -hmm. um, the people in place to make it happen in the emergency context, and then just building and testing and, and developing it from there. I think for us, the fa paid Facebook. That, that wasn't organic. That was paid. Paid Facebook conversions mm -hmm. um, in the case of emergencies is, is going to be a big driver for us um, over the next, you know, five years. Um, but we need to un unlock it and see how it's going to work for us in the long run. Okay. Uh, we'll be doing. We'll be looking to do a little bit more um, direct mail type asks on Facebook as well. Mm -hmm. um, sure. You, 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 you were at the IFC last year and. Um, around the soy dog case, mm -hmm. we'll be looking to, to, to invest in that kind of stuff as well. Okay. Um, cause I think that was quite a compelling case for, you know, keeping it, keeping it simple, mm -hmm. uh, and not, not getting too carried away with this kind of stuff. It's really is just a, an advertising these days. Facebook is just an advertising mechanism mm -hmm. and we should be treating it more like that. Um, so those are the things that we're working on and, you know, alongside the traditional website page, sign up page, monthly giving ask, 
we don't do a one-time giving ask on our on our web page. Okay. We might want to look at doing some testing around that eventually. Okay. Uh, but you know, we look, we're trying to really focus on regular giving. Yeah. Uh, and it's probably to the detriment of some, there's probably some money on the table that we're missing out on. But until we're in a place where we can scale our um, monthly givers, we mm. really don't want to just you know turn them all off because everyone will take the easy option as, as yeah. all of us fundraisers know it's easier to give 50 bucks mm -hmm. than 10 bucks a month. So um, there's innovations in the market as well that I think are interesting for us. There's a company called Dragon Pay. Okay. And they do uh, coupon redemption for payments. It's really a, it's a retail online shopping um, product offering that they have where you know you can go and you can buy a CD on Amazon. Mm -hmm. You don't have a credit card, but you can run it through the Dragon Pay system. They'll give you a code. Mm -hmm. You go to Western Union or some, some something like that. You pay your five bucks, and then they click accept it on the system, and then Dragon Pay sends the money to the vendor and it comes through it's a bit convoluted mm -hmm. but uh, but when we think of that kind of lower middle class of donors or middle class donors that don't have a credit card yet or maybe it's maxed out all the time how do we unlock um some some work around that and dragon pay is being used by a, a smartphone app right now okay. with the focus on crowdsourcing where people can share and um you know promote make a campaign send it to their friends and and the donors through that can give by a credit card but also through dragon play okay. so it's going to be interesting we're just in the process of signing signing contracts with those guys now um mm -hmm. but i'm quite excited i think it will be really really cool because it really is just it's a crowdsource web page through a really cool app mm -hmm. um and you know people here really like to socialize and share digitally so how do we turn that conversation into resources for us mm -hmm. uh, it's often the challenge in digital everywhere right how do you turn those fans into to funds yeah, yeah. Uh, so we're looking to grow that and looking to invest in it unfortunately i don't have any big things that i can show off about but you know <laughs> must be big things but uh, it's great to hear that uh, yeah it's it's fundraising from the scratch right or like like yeah. a startup and uh, it works <laughs> so Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well done, great. Congra yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, and but I think you already answered uh, my my uh, question. What's hot? What's new in digital fundraising in the on the Philippines? Uh, or do yeah. you have any other uh, new and hot things? <laughs> no, I think for for us, it's like it's how do you turn that social into into funding? It's a challenge and mm -hmm. the and the hot and interesting thing. It's the questions on on everyone's mind here as well. Uh, no one's doing it great that I can see, you know, people are definitely trying and testing. Mm -hmm. um, so ultimately someone's going to crack it and then not want to tell me about it. And then I'm going to have to find out about it <laughs> <laughs> through the rumor mill. All right. So, um, yeah, I would say thank you very much, Mike. And, um, was a great insight from uh, the fundraising on the Philippines. And I wish you a happy afternoon or evening, right? <laughs> afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, no, thank you, Jan. It was great. I really appreciate the call and really a pleasure to talk to you as well. Yeah. Um, and hi to all your fans and followers. And um, <laughs> if they want to give us some donations to the Philippines, save the children.org.ph. Perfect. Thank you very much and uh, <laughs> great afternoon. Bye. Bye, Mike. Cool, man. See you later. Thanks. <laughs>